Hey, my name is Drew Dixon. I'm the Chief Content Nerd of Love Thy Nerd, and I'm back with you for another Bible Thump. Last week we finished the Gospel of Mark, so now I'm going to pick another book of the Bible and try to encourage you from it. That's what Bible Thump is about. We open up the Bible, try to find some encouragement. So I'm going to look at the book of 1 Peter, and starting in chapter 1, and I'm just going to read uh, two verses. Is that cool? Um, well, you know what? It doesn't matter if you think it's cool, because that's what I'm going to do. All right, <laughs> so uh, 1 Peter, starting in chapter 1. Verse 1, this is what we find. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those chosen living as exiles, dispersed abroad in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit to be obedient and to be sprinkled with the blood of Jesus Christ. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. So, uh... I, if you've heard much like teaching on the Bible or whatever, this is one of those things that maybe you just kind of skip over, but it's important. And the way that P- Peter greets people from these various churches all over this place called Asia Minor, that's what we think about it now, that's, that's how we refer to these a- areas, Asia, Bithynia, uh, Cappadocia, these various churches in these places, uh, the way he greets them matters and it actually tells a story and it tells a really beautiful story so here's the first thing i want to ask you to consider for a moment who are you who are you who 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 i wanna know um sorry (laughs) sorry that was awful uh i'll i should probably never do that again um i'll try to never do that again i apologize but it's a good song if you don't know that's uh that's a, a song by the who um and also, I think it's like the theme song for one of the CSIs or something. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's an important question, though, isn't it? To like consider who we are and how we consider ourselves. And how you answer that question is really important because it tells a story. Like, who you think of yourself as tells a story. Like, do you think of yourself primarily as... Because here's some common ways we think of ourselves. You think of yourself primarily as the job that you do. So, like, you're an attorney, or you're a teacher, or you're a friend. Um, Maybe you think of yourself primarily as a friend to other people. Maybe you think of yourself as, um, like, one of your roles in society, like a father. Like, I'm a father, or I'm a husband. Um, or maybe, you know, you're, you're not a father, but you're a mother, or you're um, a homeschool teacher, or whatever it is, right? Um, a citizen of the United States, or wherever you live. Um, those are important things to consider, because that's going to shape, in a lot of ways, like how we think, and how we live our lives, and how we um, carry ourselves. So, uh, getting that question right is really important. Um, sometimes... If we're not careful, like, some of our past failures can shape how we see ourselves. We can see ourselves as failures. We can see ourselves as um, unsuccessful. Like, maybe you look at your career. You tend to think of yourself in terms of your career. And because of that, you start thinking all the ways you haven't, like, moved up the ladder of your career like you would want to. Or maybe um, you think of yourself in terms of your social status. So you think of yourself as poor or middle class or or whatever. Um it's important, right? And so uh, Peter is really aware of this because the people he's writing to are hurting. Um, now, they're, pro- they're persecuted churches that he's writing to. They're churches that were persecuted for their faith. Now, we need to sort of put it in context because most scholars think that they were like persecuted in terms of being sort of looked down upon, um, socially ostracized, like, like pushed to the margins in society, like looked down upon, but they weren't yet being killed for their faith. Now that's going to happen. There's going to come a time shortly after 1 Peter was written when the persecution these Christians were facing in Asia Minor is going to ramp up a lot. And Christians are going to be set on fire. They're going to be killed. They're going to be persecuted. It's going to get awful. Um, It's going to be awful to be a Christian in the ancient world for a while. That hasn't happened yet. At this point, it's sort of like social ostracization. That's a big word, sorry. Like people being looked down upon and treated poorly for being a Christian. Um, but here's the thing. Peter knows that that sucks. Like it sucks to be treated that way. It's awful. Nobody should be treated that way. Nobody should be looked down upon because of their faith or their religion or the color of their skin or because of their background or whatever. Like this, this shouldn't happen. That's what's going on. And so Peter writes these people who probably have a tendency to like feel bad for themselves and, 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 um, 
be overwhelmed by the sense of feeling like they're on the outside of everyone else, that they don't belong. And Peter, here's what he says to him. He calls them the chosen, living as exiles, dispersed abroad in Pontus, Asia, Cappadocia, Bithynia, and so forth. So here's what he wants them to know. You're chosen by God and you're exiles. You don't belong. Um, there's other translations that say elect exiles or um, aliens. Um, so he's saying you don't belong here, but you are chosen. Isn't that interesting? Because like part of that we don't like. I don't like the you don't belong part, but I do like the chosen part. But here's what Peter's saying. like This world as it is, is not your home, is not my home, is not the home of any follower of Jesus. We're waiting the day when Christ will return and restore us to a right relationship with God, when he will restore us to, uh, to himself, to make us like him, um, and to heal the world of its brokenness. Um, and until then, here's what you need to know. You don't belong completely. In this world as it is, we're waiting the renewal, the resurrection, the redemption of us and of this world. But here's what you do need to know about yourself. If you've looked to Jesus, if you've trusted Jesus, you are chosen. He chose you. He wants you. And even if you're not a Christian, here's something you need to know. God wants you. He wants you to be a part of his family. He says that you're chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit. So he's saying the sanctifying, what is sanctification? What is the sanctifying work of the Spirit? It's this idea that that the way we are now is not the end of the story, that God is working to renew us, to restore us, to heal us, to make us more like Jesus. That's what sanctification is. It's this process of being cleansed, of being purified. So again, your failures don't define you. Your past mistakes don't define you. The ways that you feel like you don't measure up, that doesn't define you because here's the good news. In the gospel, Christ is promising to renew you, to restore you, to establish you, to strengthen you, to make you new to heal all the things that you feel like are broken about you. Um, Sanctified through the work of the Spirit, to be obedient and to be sprinkled with the blood of Jesus Christ. Um, Why is that significant? Because blood was a symbol of purification. It was a symbol of sin having been paid for. It's a symbol of, um, of how, of the process of coming into a right relationship with God. Um, Sacrifice is required to be in a right relationship with God because he's holy. And Peter is saying, um, you've been sprinkled with the blood of Jesus. The things necessary for you to be near to God have been done. It's been taken care of. You're invited in. You're welcomed in. So, um, yeah, who are you? How, how did you answer that at the beginning when I sang that stupid song? But uh, how did you answer that at the beginning of, of, of this video, of this Bible thumb? How would you answer it now? How would you answer it now that you've seen Peter's description of these persecuted, suffering, frustrated Christians? Maybe you're frustrated too. Here's what you should know about yourself. You don't belong in this world as it is. There's awaiting a better world, but you're chosen, you're wanted, you're desired by God, and he's sanctifying you. He's healing and restoring uh, you back to God. He's healing everything that's broken about you, and he's sprinkled you with his blood. He sacrificed of himself to give you new life. That's, that's who you are. And that is really good news. Thanks for your time. We'll see you again next week as we continue looking at the book of 1 Peter.